Auschwitz, a complex of Nazi concentration and extermination camps, was responsible for the torture and death of 1.1 million people. But did you know that a man once volunteered to be imprisoned in Auschwitz? Welcome to today's video, which unfolds the story of a Polish military officer who willingly chose to go to Auschwitz. Why did he risk his life for as many as three whole years, enduring the worst form of torture? This video explores his shocking journey of bravery and resilience. Keep watching till the end to find out the significance of his activities inside Auschwitz. You will be heartbroken to hear the tragic fate of his breathtaking tale of life. Upon the conclusion of the invasion of Poland, instigated by Nazi Germany, the Slovak Republic and the Soviet Union, the Polish army was defeated and largely dismembered. Among the remaining few officers were the cavalry captain, Witold Pilecki, and his commander, Major Jan Lodarkiewicz. On November 9, 1939, both officers decided to establish a secret Polish army known as Tajna Armia Polska TAP. A year later, in 1940, Pilecki, the cavalry captain, hatched together a plan for entering Nazi Germany's Auschwitz concentration camp and presented it to his senior officers. This mission aimed to gather intelligence to be sent back to the Allies and initiate resistance among the prisoners within the camp. At this point, the world knew close to nothing of the gruesome reality of Auschwitz. The only information known to the secret Polish army was that it was a large prison where the Germans operated. When Pilecki successfully got the approval of his superior officers, he was provided with a fake identity under the name Tomasz Serofinski. During those days, the German soldiers would conduct regular street roundups to catch innocent civilians within German-controlled Poland. On September 19, 1940, when a similar street roundup was being performed on the streets of Warsaw, Pilecki went out and got himself arrested. Pilecki was taken to the Light Horse Guards barracks, where he was beaten with rubber batons for two days before being sent to Auschwitz, where he was given inmate number 4859. Thus began the shocking journey of a brave man who had no idea of the atrocities he was about to witness. Upon arriving at the camp, Witold Pilecki saw something that he described as another planet. Walls filled with swastikas and bodies and blood on the floor were the norm of the camp. A part of his mission was to set up a network of prisoners that would work together to gain valuable information regarding the atrocities of the camp. He chose a group of five unknown prisoners to start an organization that would later become a significant resistance within the camp. He improved the living conditions of his loyal army. He helped them get jobs under one roof within the camp to share information and work together without getting noticed. His established underground military organization, Suyazek Organizatsi Wojskowe, ZOW, within the camp, would send regular reports to the Home Army in Poland as early as October 1940. ZOW published the first account of a genocide inside Auschwitz in November 1940. By March 1941, Pilecki could send regular information to the Polish government, which was exiled to London after the invasion. These periodic messages sent by Pilecki were the first primary source of any intelligence the Allies had about the Holocaust. Another key event in Pilecki's journey within the concentration camp came on June 20, 1942, when four members of ZOW escaped the camp and carried with them a written report by Pilecki that included a detailed account of the conditions of the camp and the gruesome activities such as the gas chambers and punishment carried out by the German soldiers against the prisoners, especially the Jews. You may be wondering, if so much information was being given out by Pilecki, what was the response to his efforts by the free world and especially the Allied powers? No one believed Pilecki and his reports, especially the Allies. According to them, these reports were fake and manufactured by the Polish government to gain extra support. Those who read the reports in Britain thought it was impossible for gas chambers to exist. The British officials also questioned the idea of why the German soldiers would put in so much effort to starve the Jews and torture and kill them in such horrifying ways. Hence, no actions were taken to stop the concentration camps and the genocide being conducted in Auschwitz. A second part of his mission was to create an uprising and resistance within the camp and organize a fight between the prisoners and the SS agents. In late 1942, Pilecki had over 1,000 members within his organization. He was convinced that a planned uprising could result in his organization taking control of the entire camp. However, he knew that if these 1,000-plus prisoners were to escape collectively, they would need external support from the Allies and the Polish underground army. So he waited for the response to arrive for the uprising. Nothing came his way. His reports did not persuade the Polish government or the Allies. The Allies refused to carry out any operation on Auschwitz, and the Polish army was scared of the thousands of German soldiers already present in the military. Thus, no rebellion or conflict could occur, and Pilecki was let down by both his nation and its allies once more. Pilecki's escape story is no less than an action thriller movie. 
On the night of 26 to 27 April 1943, Pilecki and two other prisoners were posted to work outside the camp in a bakery alongside two SS guards. When the guards were distracted, the three of them made a run for their lives. They were chased but to no avail until they reached Vistula, where they used two boats. Pilecki, along with two other prisoners, walked dozens of miles through a forest, wearing civilian caps with shaved heads to hide their identities. They met a farmer who attended to them and gave them food and a place to sleep. On May 1st, they came across a German soldier who shot at them, hitting Pilecki in the arm. Yet again, they managed to escape and finally reached their final destination, the house of Auschwitz's prisoner's step-parents. After escaping from Auschwitz, we told Pilecki wrote a detailed report consisting of over 100 pages, highlighting every single detail of his first-hand experience of over 1,000 days at Auschwitz. Unfortunately, it wasn't until 2000 that this report was compiled and published for the world to see. Highlighted in the report were some significant discoveries about the horrific reality of the entire Holocaust. Harsh conditions, brutal daily routines, starvation, forced labor, constant fear of torture and death. The selections, a process of Nazi guards choosing who survives and who they will kill. The gas chambers and crematoria, places where hundreds and thousands were murdered brutally and their bodies burned. Medical experiments, science experiments were performed on prisoners as a form of torture. We told Pilecki had already received no help during his mission, but his life worsened after his escape. At first, he had to be a German prisoner of war from 1943 to 1945. After that, a communist government altered every aspect of Poland's environment. He was falsely accused, mistrusted, and treated miserably on his return to Poland. Even the secret Polish army mistreated him and accused him of treason. On May 8, 1947, he was detained by the security office of the communist government of Poland. After conducting a sham trial, he was tortured and sentenced to death. On May 25, 1948, Witold Pilecki was executed at the age of 47. His sacrifice and bravery were silenced for decades under the communist regime. The world was unaware of the hardships he went through to expose one of the most shocking events in all of human history. Pilecki would receive his deserved recognition after 1989 when communist Poland would come to an end. It was also found that his reports were accurate compared to the official reports of Auschwitz, called the Auschwitz Protocols. We told Pilecki, a remarkable and selfless individual, put himself through one of the most dangerous and terrifying experiences for the sake of humanity. Demonstrating unparalleled bravery and dedication, his efforts, from deciding to willingly enter Auschwitz, a notorious death camp, to reporting, establishing an underground army, and heroically escaping, restore our faith in humanity's resilience and goodness. His sad demise at the hands of those whom he helped liberate is tragic. Yet, it was his unwavering efforts that showed the world the horrifying reality of the Holocaust.